Hi everyone, Bria here from Edgetactuarial, and today I'm going to give you seven things that you can do to increase your chances of getting an actuarial job. Because it's not really as easy as a lot of people think, it's not just pass a few exams and suddenly jobs are flying out of everywhere for you. <laughs> so, these seven things will really help improve your chances of getting a job. So, of course, the number one thing, well, these aren't really in order or anything, but the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is pass some exams. You probably aren't going to be able to get an actuarial job with no exams passed. Probably even one isn't enough. So, I would recommend getting at least two to three exams passed if you're not in Canada. If you're in Canada, then you're probably going to want to have four to five. Um, I would recommend passing exam P and FM, and likely you'll want to pass IFM because, well, IFM is the new MFE, and IFM is the only other one that is currently accepted by the SOA and CAS. So, if you get those three exams, you'll be in a really good place to get a job. If you have those three exams, or even more, and you're not able to get a job, it's probably not your exams that are causing a problem for you. So you'll have to improve your chances by doing these other things that I'm going to tell you. Okay. okay, the number two thing that you can do is improve your technical skills. So I'm sure you've heard me talk about this in a lot of different videos, but actuaries use Excel all the time. Actually, you absolutely need to know how to use Excel. Um, access, access, like Microsoft Access is really good to know as well. Don't get that confused with uh, GGY Axis. GGY Axis is also really good to know, but it's probably not something you'll be able to learn without having an internship or a job already, because that's something that you'd only get experience with in the workplace, likely. Um, you also would be in a really good place if you knew how to do VBA programming, which is just creating macros and stuff to automate Excel. Um, VBA comes in useful all the time for me when I'm working. Um, another thing would be SQL and Python. Those two languages are really helpful to know. It's not actually something that I've ever required in my job, but I know a lot of different uh, positions would find that useful and it's definitely a good skill to have when you're an actuary because automating things and writing code is something that comes in helpful all the time. Okay. Number three is to get an understanding of different insurance and annuity products. So since you're going into an insurance based position, it will be really helpful if you actually have some good knowledge about how insurance works. That includes life insurance, health insurance, property and casualty insurance. If you have a pretty good understanding of the basics of how that all works, which you probably learned from some of your exams, your earlier exams, but if you have that understanding, it's really going to help you get an actuarial position because employers don't want to really teach you that kind of stuff. It's good for you to know that already. Annuities are something you'll learn a lot about in FM, bonds and, and loans and stuff like that will also really be helpful, but also topics that you'll learn on exam FM. So that's also a reason why having exam P and FM are really good uh, foundations for you when you're looking for your actuarial jobs because they do teach you quite a lot of basics of stuff that you need for an actuarial job. Okay. Okay, number four is one that I see a lot of people have problems with, and that is your resume. Now, I'm not talking about specifically uh, what things you have and what accomplish accomplishments you have on your resume, but more so I'm just talking about the overall format of it and how you really show employers that your past experiences are relevant to an actuarial position. A lot of the time I see people just uh, like kind of list tasks that they completed at their different positions, but just stating tasks doesn't show an employer how those tasks were beneficial and helped you improve your skills to be relevant for an actuarial position. So, um, actually I, I created a course about how to build your resume uh, for an actuarial position recently. I'll link to that course in the description if you're interested, but you really have to make sure that everything on your resume is important, 
it's going to make you stand out and it's formatted in a way that will make employers want to read it. So that's something that's something that can really hold someone back even if they have really great experience. Okay, number five, five is a big one too. And this is to improve your interview skills. And actually this one can be a bit harder to do because you, it's hard to improve your skills when you're not getting interviews, right? So, and actually not only just your interview skills, but your communication skills in general. Um, it's a pretty well-known fact that actuaries aren't the most social people. We don't really generally like to talk a lot and we're not very good at communicating. It's just a, a fact for most of us. Anyway, so it will really help you get an actuarial position if you're good with that stuff. So there are things that you can do to improve it. Uh, some of the things I might recommend are just getting another, maybe an actuarial friend or just someone else that you can practice interviewing with. Like that would be awesome experience for you. And it, it might feel a little awkward at first and stuff, but it's really important to be able to improve your skills. So you can do that. There's also a club called Toastmasters where you can practice your presentation skills and your communication skills. I've actually never done it, but it's something that I've considered in the past and I think it would be a really, really great experience for someone looking for an actuarial position. Um, it would really make you stand out if you do have good commu communication skills because it is something that we generally, generally lack in the industry. Okay. Six would be to get an internship or some kind of related job, a job related to actuarial work. Um, really any job in an office is going to give you a huge amount of experience that will be really beneficial for an actuarial position. Um, so when you're looking for internships and jobs, you don't have to be too picky. Like a lot of people just apply to actuarial jobs and that's all, but you, when you're just starting out, you can't be that picky. And there's going to be so many other related job experiences that will make you a really good actuarial candidate. So if you look for something in maybe underwriting, anything that has to do with analyzing data, almost any job in an insurance company would be great because you'd be learning about the different nuances of insurance and annuities and pensions and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, so these, these kind of experiences will really help improve your chances, so I wouldn't underestimate how important it is. If you've already graduated, I'd still recommend not just applying to actuarial positions. Try to get any job that you can in an office because that alone will help improve your chances of getting an actuarial position. Okay, and the last tip I have for you, tip number seven, is to expand your search. A lot of people get kind of narrow in their search. They apply in only a very specific geographical area or they apply to only very specific types of jobs. I guess this kind of ties into my number six, but you have to really be open to change when you're searching for your first actuarial job. So if you have to go 30 miles away, 40, 50, 100 miles away, to get a job that's really going to have a huge impact on the rest of your career, it will be worth it. I've seen people move to different countries in order to get a job, or even if you have to go out of state or out of province if you're in Canada, it will be worth it to get that experience, even if it's just for one year or two years. And another thing is that you shouldn't just apply for PNC jobs or just life insurance jobs. You should be applying to any actuarial position that is available, whether it be pensions, consulting, uh, life insurance, health insurance, benefits, uh, pension benefits, doesn't matter. Just apply. You don't have to be there forever. You can just do that for one or two years, get your experience, and then you'll be much more employable somewhere else that is hopefully more in the area that you want to get in. Okay, so those are all my seven tips, but I do have one thing I want to make sure you realize. There's one thing here that a lot of people think will help, but it actually really won't, and that is to go back to school and get a master's in actuarial science. That is not going to help you get a job. 
Employers don't really care what your degree is. What they care about is that you can pass exams and that you have some of these other skills that I've already talked about. Getting another degree and doing more school isn't going to make you more employable. So please, please, please don't waste your time doing that. There is so much other stuff that you could be spending your valuable time on other than going back to school. So I hope this video has helped. If you want to check out that resume course that I talked about, I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you're looking for your first actuarial job right now, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment in the description below if you have any questions for me. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!